do you have questions about registering your copyright in the United States? This video is the ultimate guide to copyright registration for writers in a hurry from a writer who went to law school. This video is brought to you by my book, 150 Self-Publishing Questions Answered, the book for writers wanting to know the A to Z of writing, publishing, and book marketing. It'll give you clarity, confidence, and teach you how to turn your imagination into income. Level up your author business today by visiting authorlevelup.com slash 150. The book is available in ebook, paperback, and audio narrated by me. That's authorlevelup.com slash 150. What's up, guys? Michael Laron here with Author Level Up, helping you master the craft of writing. If you're new here, consider subscribing and click that little bell, ding, 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 to get notifications every time I have a new writing video. And in this video, we're talking about copyright registration. I'm qualified to talk about this topic because I went to law school, I passed copyright law, I have written over 50 books, I've sold stories to magazines, uh, I've gotten my books into various formats, and I have negotiated copyright and intellectual property contracts. But that being said, I am not an attorney, and this video is not legal advice. And if you have a specific situation uh, or an issue that you're dealing with, please contact a licensed attorney in your state or country. Oh, and the content of this video applies to the United States only. Got to get that out there. So, so registration, why, why register your work? If you recall in the last video that I did on copyright basics, we said that copyright is automatic the moment that you affix your words to the page and you don't have to copyright your work. Copyright is not a verb. We don't have to do that to our work. So why do we have to register copyrights? What are we talking about? Why do we need to, to put this on deposit with the Library of Congress? So let's go rapid fire through some questions. First off is, should I register my work? Now this answer is, is, is a bit multifaceted. Remember, we're only talking about registering your work in the United States. Okay, I cannot say that enough. <laughs> okay, copyright is automatic. It, it, it happens the moment you put stuff on the page. But in the United States, it may be beneficial to register your work so that you can demonstrate and prove that you have the legal ownership to the work if there was ever, dispute, ever a dispute. But the number one reason to register your work in the United States is that if you want to sue someone for copyright infringement in the United States, you are required to register your work with the government. Now, let me be clear. If you intend to sue someone for copyright infringement, you are required to register your work. You are not required to register your work simply because you created the work. That is an important distinction. However, if you fail to register your work in a timely manner, then you could potentially lose out on the ability to recover certain amounts of money in, in a lawsuit and your attorney's fees. Just, just keep it super basic. We'll, we won't go any deeper than that. <laughs> so while you are not required to register your copyright, it makes sense to do it so that you don't lose any of those rights if in the future you ever did want to sue for copyright. I hope that makes sense. I, I know all, all my friends watching this who aren't in the United States are probably shaking your heads. They're like, this is just crazy. And it is crazy, but hey, we live in the United States, which is a highly litigious country. Michael Laron's opinion only is that if you can afford to pay the fee, I would register your copyright every time. The next question is, how much does copyright cost? At the time of this recording, which things are always subject to change, but it costs $45 to register a single work by a single author. Now there are variations and exceptions to this, of course. The next question always comes from my friends outside the United States, which is, do I need to register a work in the United States if I don't live in the United States? The answer is that the United States is a signatory to the Bernie Convention, which is a treaty that most countries in the world have signed onto. And the signatories of the Bernie Convention agree to honor and reciprocate each other's copyrights. This means that a copyright in the United States is also valid in England and is also valid in Australia, for example. So the registration requirement that I talked about is valid for US citizens because they need to register their work in order to sue 
for copyright infringement in the United States. That is the main reason to register a copyright. Now, if you live in England and you find out that someone in the United States is infringing your work and you want to sue them, well, then you would be required to register your copyright in order to sue them in the United States. Now, if you live in England and you're just writing a book and you're wondering if you need to register it, well, if no one's infringing on your work and you don't have any intention to sue, then it's Michael Laron's opinion only that you would not need to register the work in the United States. Now, again, this is Michael Laron's opinion only, but if you've just written a book and you live outside the United States and no one is infringing on your work, then I personally don't think that you need to register a copyright here in the States. Now, everybody's situation might be different, but if you want to sue somebody, you definitely must register a copyright. The next question that comes up is, do I need to use my real name? Because some people have concerns about registering things under their real names. And the answer to that is that anything that you register with the United States Copyright Office does become part of the public record. So if you use your real name, that does become part of the public record. But per the United States Copyright Office, you are not required to use your real name on a copyright application. So if you want to register a work under a pseudonym, you can use the pseudonym as the name. Now that does come with some downsides and if you do want to do that, I would highly recommend talking to an attorney because there are some legal things that, and, and legal pitfalls that you have to be aware of. But you are not required to use your real name on an application. If my book is traditionally published, do I still need to register my copyright? Generally speaking, no. And the reason for that is because the publisher will typically handle your registration when they publish your book. That being said, it still makes sense to check their registration to make sure that what they filed is correct, that they spelled your name properly and, and all that stuff. Now, another question that comes up is whether you should register your copyright at all if you're going to submit to literary agents or traditional publishers. And my answer is, it's probably a good idea to register the first draft of your book. So before you start sending it out, get it registered. So that way you can prove ownership in case there's any foul play down the road. Another question that will often come up is whether you should register your copyright before you send it to beta readers. You know, it won't hurt, but yeah, I don't think beta readers are at the end of the day probably gonna be a huge concern for you. How do I submit my manuscript to the Library of Congress? Fortunately, the United States Copyright Office has an online portal called ECO, and it's very easy to use. In fact, we're gonna jump over to my computer and I will show you just how easy it is to register a copyright and the important things you need to be looking out step by step. All right, I'm on the United States Copyright Office website and I'm at copyright.gov slash registration. So what I can do here is scroll down and I can log into the electronic copyright registration system. You just have to set up a username and password. It's nearly not that complicated. All right, so I'm on ECO. That's what, uh, that's what this is called. And yes, this does look like this was coded back in 1999, but there's really not much we can do about that. So really what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a new work. So under here, we're gonna select register a work. We're gonna select standard application and then we're gonna select start registration. And really we're just gonna step through the forms here. So they ask, what is the type of work? Assuming just for the sake of this video that we have a straightforward novel. All right, nothing complicated, just, just a straightforward novel, okay? So we're gonna click the button here and then we're gonna hit continue. And then here we gotta put in the title. So we're gonna select new and the t under title type, we're gonna select the title of the work that's being registered. We're not gonna get into any of the other comments here. Okay, so the title of this work, we'll just say it's My Great American Novel. Okay, just keep things simple. We'll hit save. So we're gonna hit continue. And then has the work been published? We'll say yes, we'll assume it's a self-published work. Published work, yes, nation of publication, United States. Year of publication, 20. Tw your creation 2020, um, the date of first publication, uh, we'll say it's today. Just remember that the year of creation and the date of first publication can be different. So you wanna make sure you're clear on that. Uh, under international standard type, what they're getting at is this is ISBNs, all right? So for 99% of you, you're gonna be selecting an ISBN here and then you enter the ISBN number if you have it. If you don't have an ISBN, then just leave that blank. 
And then what we'll do here, we won't worry about pre-registration. That's a whole other can of worms that we're not gonna talk about in this video. So we click next and then now we need we get to the authors. So we need to name the authors being registered uh, and give the requested information. All right, so we're gonna click the new button here and um, uh, actually I, I won't type in any of this info. But uh, here, here, remember what I said in the video, you don't have to put your real name here, okay? It, you can put your real name here or you can put your author pseudonym here. But the important thing to remember is that if you put your real name here and you're using a pseudonym, you need to make sure that you select this pseudonymous button here, okay? If you're publishing under the pseudonym and you don't wanna put your real name here, then you would put your pseudonym here and you would not select the pseudonymous button here. Okay, and then if you do select the pseudonymous button, you got to actually put your synonym. Okay, so everything else on here is pretty straightforward. Um, since we're doing a novel, this is not a work made for hire. N most of you w probably aren't going to deal with works made for hire. That has to do more with uh, journalism or if you're a ghost writer, that sort of thing. All right, so uh, I'll hit, uh, well, it won't let me save. So I'll just hit cancel. And then we'll go to claimants here. Now, a copyright claimant is the person that is making a claim to the work. So for us, most of you watching, you are an author. You are going to be publishing a book or registering a book that you've published. So therefore, you are the original copyright claimant. And be sure to read all the information on these screens. It will help you understand exactly what is needed of you. It, it is fairly straightforward. So under the claimant's name, you you would need to put your information here. And again, um, you could use your real name or use a pseudonym. So this is where the claimant information goes. Nine times out of 10 for most of you, you are going to be the claimant. All right, so here's the limitation of, of claim screen. If this is a brand spanking new novel, then you, you're, you're probably not gonna have to worry about this. But if you've previously registered your work and you're registering a new version of it, because maybe you got everything re-edited or maybe it was sold to, additional pub, to a traditional publisher, then here is where you would enter in all of the original information so that you can make sure that you're registering only the parts of the work that are new. All right, now rights and permissions. Now here, you don't have to put anything here. This is this is all optional, but it may be a good idea if you want someone to reach out to you to get permission to put your information here or where they can contact you if they do want permission for uh, using your work for any reason. Now, if you have a website, they can contact you through your website as well. Um, sometimes people put their attorneys here. Sometimes people put their literary agents here. Um, the key is that if you do put anything here, don't put your personal information. Um, put a PO box or a UPS store, at least for those here in the United States. Um, yeah, don't 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 list your your personal information, but list somewhere where people can contact you. All right, correspondent. Um, if the Copyright Office has any questions about this application, this is where uh, they're gonna contact you. What you put here does not show up in the public records, all right? Now, where are they gonna mail the certificate? That's the next thing here. Um, once your copyright registration has been approved, they're gonna mail you a certificate, and it's just a one-page document that lists all the information that you registered. So again, you're gonna wanna put your information here so that they can send you a proper uh, registration certificate. Um, special handling, most of you are not gonna have to deal with this type of situation, um, so we're not gonna go over that. And under certification, you just gotta make sure that everything you put on the application is correct and true to the best of your knowledge, all that legally stuff. And then you'll have the opportunity to review your template. Um, if, if, if there's anything I can tell you, it's just be very careful with how you document everything here. You don't want to make any typos. You don't want to make any mistakes. You want to make sure that you're, you're putting in exactly what you need to be putting in and that you're following the instructions of the Copyright Office to the letter that will help protect you later down the road. Now, once you've paid for your registration and once you have got everything taken care of, the Copyright Office will ask you to upload a deposit of your manuscript and just simply follow the prompts. I believe a Word doc is what people usually upload. It's, it's not hard at all. You, you basically upload your deposit and then the Copyright Office has that on record in case you ever need it. Now, another question that people are going to have is, well, what does this look like when I've registered it? When, when the Copyright Office approves it, what does it look like? So what we can do is we can go to copyright.gov and we can scroll down a little bit here to where it says search copyright records. And this will give you 
another database that literally looks like it was coded in 1999, but this will allow us to search for certain things. So we can search by title or we can search by name or registration number. So what we can do is uh, we'll just use their example here. Let's search by names. Let's look at all of the, the books that Michael Crichton has, has written. All right, so here, here is our list of, of things here, but what we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for the books. So we're gonna look for copyright numbers with registrations that begin with TX, all right? That, that signifies a book or a literary text. So this is a copyright registration for Sphere, a novel that Michael Crichton wrote, and you can see how simple this is, right? So we've got the title here, we've just got some basic information about the book. You can see that Michael Crichton is the copyright claimant and we've got a date of creation and a date of publication. So this is how you would look up a copyright registration just to verify that everything is correct. Or if you needed to look up a copyright registration for any other purpose, this is how you would do it. It's so there you have it. Those are the basics of copyright registration and I hope that this video helped you. Now I put together another video on the cons of traditional publishing versus self-publishing. So if you haven't seen that, when the end screen comes up, be sure to click that and I will see you in the next video. Perfect.